Welcome again, <clears throat> excuse me, to uh, Joe Stunner Boxing. Um, in Perth, Australia, this coming weekend, we have the return of two fighters who are coming off uh, defeats. Um, one is George, well, no, actually, George Cambos is not coming off a defeat because he beat Maxi Hughes, but a lot of people think he didn't. Um, and I thought that was a close fight. I didn't think it was the great robbery people are saying, but I did think Hughes won it. Um, but Lomachenko certainly is coming off a defeat, and that, that defeat is to Devin Haney. Um, and that was for undisputed lightweight title. Now, let me let me start with Lomachenko, because if I live to be a 1,000, I'll never understand why he competed at lightweight, why he didn't stay at super featherweight and try and unify there. I just don't get it. He's Even now, even after all these fights at lightweight, he is still a small lightweight. And if you look at the two defeats he's had for undisputed, which were to Teofimo Lopez and Devin Haney, both those guys are huge lightweights. And size does matter, as the old cliche goes. You know, there are weight divisions for a reason. So I think in a sense, and I don't know whether it was arrogance or maybe the money was there or, you know, at lightweight. I, but by fighting at 135, I, I think he kind of outdid himself, really, Lomachenko. Um, because I think the size difference, I know that he said he was injured in, in the Tiafimo Lopez fight, but the size difference seemed to me to be a major factor in both those defeats. Obviously, it's not the only factor, but it, it, had they been you know, roughly the same size, had you know Lomachenko been, I don't know, five pounds of natural weight heavier, um, natural weight I'm talking about, and not just you know being in that division for the sake of it, I think there might have been a different, certainly with the Haney fight, there might have been a different outcome. Now, a lot of people think that Lomachenko beat Haney anyway. Um, and I, again, I don't think that's a great robbery. That was a close fight. I don't know why, I don't know why people insist on saying like, so many of these fights are robberies. You know, I thought Lomachenko edged it, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a great robbery. I mean, it was, you know, Certainly in the early, the first half of the fight, Haney was winning rounds. You know, you, you score a fight over 12, if it's, if it's 12 round fight, you don't score it the last third, you score it over the full 36 minutes. Um, and I do think, yeah, I think it was unfortunate Lomachenko in that fight. I definitely thought Lopez beat him. And Lomachenko was saying he had a shoulder injury and so on and so forth. Okay, fair enough, you know, but no one forced you in the ring. You know, you've got to be realistic about these things. So Lomachenko, you know, why is he at lightweight? Well, he is, he is. Whatever the reason, he is at lightweight. And he's he's still after all those belts because his ultimate dream, as he said many times, was to be undisputed. He doesn't consider holding a belt makes you a world champion. Probably makes you a world titleist. But you've got to hold all the belts and become undisputed before you can say you are um, you are the world, the world champion. Okay, so George Kambosis. Um, now, I like George Kambos a lot. I'm a huge fan of, of Lomachenko. I always have been. But George Kambos, I've got a soft spot for him because this is a guy who, you know, he went on the road to try and earn his shot at the titles. Um, he became the IBF's mandatory, which is how he got the Tiafimo Lopez fight. And he did it by fighting Mickey Bay in America. That was a close one. Then he went over to Britain and edged out Lee Selby, who isn't really a lightweight at all, never was. Um, jumped from featherweight. I don't know why he didn't stop off at super feather, but there again. <laughs> Another one who was trying to probably eat himself into a division, maybe. Um, and he ends up in America as supposedly cannon fodder for Teofimo Lopez, who's coming off his victory over Lomachenko. Now, the fact that Cambosis was so confident, was talking so... Um, almost regally, he was saying, you know, you've heard of the Undisputed, I'm the Emperor, the Emperor's come to take over. <laughs> and, you know, all the, including Tiafimo Lopez and his, his father uh, and his team, they, they were looking at him and saying, oh, this guy's serious? What, you, you really? You think so? No. And there was a lot of, uh, you know, Lomachenko, stir, um, sorry, Cambosa stirred the pudding, wound up uh, Lopez and his bizarre father, Um and, of course, there was that incredible Cinderella story fight where the total underdog, the guy no one gave a hope in hell to. I think my prediction was that Lopez would stop him in about six rounds or something like that. I wasn't alone in believing that. What happens in the first round? Um, 
Cambosis pings a, a counter off Lopez's uh, jaw and he, he hits the floor. And although um, although Lopez manages to score a late round knockdown, one of the later round knockdowns, uh, nevertheless, Cambosis carried on fighting off the back foot using a lot of speed because he's very fast, Cambosis. Um, defensively, he's not, he's okay, but not brilliant. Um, I don't think he can really fight on the back foot, not not particularly effectively. Um, usually, he can't find the back foot, but he certainly did against Lopez because Lopez was so reckless. Lopez was just sort of coming in and, you know, I don't know maybe I'm being a little unkind. Maybe maybe George is better on the back foot than I, I previously gave him credit for. But I was really amazed to see him doing that against Lopez because I thought, well, to beat Lopez, he's just going to have to get stuck into him. Not a bit of it. He used Teofimo Lopez's aggression and um, physicality, his desire to get in close and be physical with, with George. He used it against him. Um, and a brilliant performance. The right man won. I mean, the corner work by Lopez's father is some of the worst, if not the worst, I've ever seen. I mean, certainly since the days when, what was it, Jay Bright in the Mike Tyson corner? And oh God, I don't even want to go there. But yeah, bizarre, bizarre corner work. Go in there and knock him out. Knock him out now. Go on, just go and knock him out. Oh, yeah. All right. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for chatting. Um, ludicrous, really. Uh, but then, having beaten Lopez, Cambosis went back to Australia and he wanted to take on Lomachenko. Um, but, of course, the Russian invasion of Ukraine made, meant that um, Vasily Lomachenko had things, other things on his mind. And, and so it was decided, OK, I'll take on Haney. I'll take on the very best. Now, I respect this enormously because here's a guy who's had this Cinderella moment where he's won, he's won all the belts. And what does he do? He doesn't sit on them. He doesn't try and, you know, ignore his mandatories. He doesn't he doesn't look for easy touches to pad his his record and his bank balance. He says, no, no, give me the best one. All right. Lomachenko's not ready. Haney, yeah, I'll have him. In fact, I'll have him twice. Because obviously there was into the in the contract there was a rematch clause. And as we know, he lost them both. I mean, he won a handful of rounds over over the twenty-four, but he was clearly beaten. He was a bit better in the second fight, although I think he was a bit, a little bit more aggressive in that fight. I think in the first fight, he was trying to do that counter-punching thing again. Well, against Lopez, it worked because he wound him up like a clockwork toy. Um, and as soon as Lopez came, you know, trundling towards him, George was waiting. But you ain't going to do that with Devin Haney. And again, Haney, like Lopez, a very, very big lightweight. George is a lightweight, but I wouldn't say he was a particularly big lightweight. You know, he's probably going to spend the rest of his career in that division. Um, I think he'd be too small for 140, certainly the bigger 140 fighters. But he got beaten twice. And I didn't really think much of, much of it. I, I thought, you know, that's, that's a shame. I wanted George to win because I wanted his story to carry on. But I don't think there's any shame in losing twice to, to a, a peak Devin Haney. Not at all. And both those were in Australia. Credit to Haney for going out there and fighting him twice, you know. Um, but this, you know, George was competitive. He, he, I mean, he got oh, the state of the bloke. He got smashed to bits twice, you know, like death by a thousand jabs and hooks and crosses. <laughs> but but he, he went the distance twice um, and he wasn't on the floor. So I suppose he can take that that from those fights. And then he, he crops up against Maxi Hughes, of all people. Maxi Hughes, who... You know, some of us remember, uh, some of us have actually watched, you know, ringside on at domestic level, um, both winning and losing fights. But, you know, not really. Maxi Hughes, you wouldn't have said he would have a, a run at world level. Well, he bloody well did because he ended up not just fighting, but in many people's opinion, beating George Cambosis. And again, I didn't think this was a robbery. I did think that, again, Maxi Hughes won, uh, just like I thought that, Lomachenko beat Haney, but not by much. Um, but there was no doubt that, that that was a poor performance by George. I mean, we've seen Maxi Hughes going with Williams the Pater since then, and he got smashed to bits. Um, and George, he, he gave George all sorts of problems. George was at times just following following him around like he was on a piece of string. Um, it wasn't. It was a poor performance, and George looked out of ideas. He didn't seem to have any imagination. Maxi was the one controlling the range, and the, yeah, I mean, I definitely thought Maxi Hughes won that fight. Um, two points, three points, maybe you know, but 
George didn't look good. Even if you even if you feel that you know the, the result was fair and that he deserved to win, he didn't look good in that fight at all. It was very disappointing. And um, so, what do we find? We find Lomachenko colliding with George Cambosis. And how who's going to win this? Well, you see, when you when you've got these sort of intangibles, like you know, so and so might be past his best, or inactivity might play a part. And, I, what I do when I'm making a prediction, and my predictions are, you know, I probably get sixty percent right, maybe a bit, maybe seventy percent right. But I always make my predictions by saying I'm going to assume they're both at their, you know, they have no trouble making weight, they're both fit, they're both mentally prepared, um, and therefore I'll, I'll make my prediction based on that. And assuming that Lomachenko is not past his best, and that some of his old injuries, like his old shoulder injury that he had doesn't come up um and assuming they both made the weight okay and assuming george is you know at his optimum weight and has prepared well which he didn't really do for the first haney fight um i think what what will have to happen is certainly for george to win he the moment the opening bell goes he's got to be on lomachenko he's got to be extremely aggressive and his jab has got to be doing overtime. Bang, bang, bang with the jab. I don't care if it's hitting forearms, gloves, missing, hitting the chest, the, you know, the face, the forehead. I don't care. That jab has got to be bang, 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 you know, like a almost like a Tommy gun. And also the right cross as well. Bring the right cross over. Any any hint of, it, of George trying to do any kind of back foot boxing is going to play right into Lomachenko's hands. Lomachenko starts slowly. And everyone says, well, he's downloading information is the phrase. Well, no, he starts slowly. <laughs> he starts slowly. He has a look at his opponents. And yes, he'll figure you out. But if George is going to win, he's got to pick up those early rounds. He's got to pick them up. And he's got to stop Lomachenko from finding any kind of rhythm. And even when Lomachenko sees the gaps and pings him, and let's be honest, George ain't hard to find, you know, not a lot of the time. Um, he's got a great chin, though. He's got to come back. He's got to have the last word in the exchanges. Again, you know, if, maybe even a little bit of dirtiness, throw a bit of dirtiness, get in there and a couple of little shoulder barges and whatever. He's got to take... Lomachenko out of his comfort zone, which is extremely difficult to do. I accept it. I accept that fact. Lomachenko has got to do what he always does. He's got to find out, you know, it's kind of like what he did with Nakatani when he fought Nakatani, the Japanese fighter. Um, you know, as soon as he finds the rhythm, as soon as he, he checks the guy out and sees sees what he's doing and what, what the opponent is favouring, what type of punches, you know, what the opponent's rhythm might be. He's got to go to work by, you know, making a miss and pay, which he does so beautifully. His footwork is incredible. Southpaw, Lomachenko, um, all you know, those years of dancing, was it Ukrainian folk dance or whatever he did when he was a kid? You know, it, it pays dividends because his footwork is just sublime. Um, I think the only person that's had him on the floor is Linares, and that wasn't a heavy knockdown at all. Um and to be honest with you, George, the fact that George isn't a massive lightweight will play into Loma's hands as well. I can see Lomachenko after six rounds, five, six rounds, really starting to put it on George and really, you know, finding that, you know, all those little semicircles he does and, and keeping the guy off balance and... Sometimes he sort of spins around and ends up behind them. I mean, he, he, if you look at the Richard Comey fight, he, he toyed with Richard Comey. He had him on the floor. He looked, looked like he was going to stop him. Um, I think at one point he told the referee to stop the fight, which is, I don't like it when fighters do that. Let the referee do his job. You know, don't, don't, be, don't be arrogant about it. Um, yeah, I, I can sort of see a same, the same sort of thing happening here. I think after six rounds, George is going to be gallant and game as hell and tough as hell. But I can see in the second half of the fight, I mean, Lomachenko might be, say, 4-2 down after six. That's possible. I can I can imagine that. Uh, but in the second half of the fight, I think Loma will really start to turn the screws, start to pull all the tricks, all the, you know, keeping the guy off balance, don't let him get reset, ping him when he's least expecting it, counter punch beautifully, and then you're gone, you know, you ping him and then you're gone. And uh, I can see Lomachenko really putting the hurt on George. And I think this might be a stoppage, um, stopping George on his feet or maybe the corner, pull him out. I'm, I'm going to say rounds, 
11, maybe I'll go for 11. You know, maybe no, 9, 10, 11, that sort of point, that, that part of the fight. I, I've, I always like to pick a round just to try and be a smart ass. So I'll go with round 11. I see George being pulled out um, or the towel coming in or something like that. I think he'll just be sort of slashed to ribbons, really, in the second half of the fight by Lomachenko, who will take a little time to find, you know, his groove, to find his mojo. But when he does, he'll go to work. And I don't, I just don't think George has got the variety or the imagination to keep someone like Lomachenko off him. Um, and, yeah, if he thought it was death by a thousand uppercuts uh, by from Devin Haney, it's going to be more of the same from Lomachenko. Yeah, so what do you think? Who do you think wins? I like both these guys. I'm a big, big fan of them both. Um, but who do you think is going to win? Please leave your comments below and I'll, I'll give them a read. And... Um, as always, thank you if you've subscribed. Thank you for watching. If you're new to the channel, you can subscribe. That would be a big help. That would be great, you know. just want to build the channel up. And, um, yeah, you know, I'll hit the like button as well because I count them, apparently. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I will catch you later, and bye for now.